this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Domancing. St. Croix's Elections Board called an emergency meeting Wednesday to address the recurring problem of mold at the elections office. In recent weeks, employees have had to be sent home because the situation is so bad. News 2's Erica Parsons has more. Employees of the election system on St. Croix are being affected by mold. In fact, they've had to leave the office several times this month to avoid getting sick. It's been affecting us for a while, but since the office was closed for the holidays, it got worse. We got actually, we actually started more growth more on the books. St. Croix Elections Board Chair Delbert Bryan calls an emergency meeting to address the situation, but he was the only member of the board who showed up. I must be convinced that the Board of Elections system is not paying the landlord for property in the building that is not adequately healthy and safe. So if they can't prove anything to me, then the employees have a right to report the situation to OSHA. Bryan held a meeting anyway, updating the media and the public about the employees' concerns and what had been done. When Supervisor Fox came on board, um, one of the first things, uh, one of the things she did was she actually had a company come in to conduct air quality testing. A letter dated in November, Sunny Al said that they were in receipt of the um, of the report and that they would immediately address um, issues that's their that's basically their responsibility on friday a cleaning crew came in we had the company come back in and actually clean out and do an extensive remedi mold remedi remediation of the actual books and that's the only thing that was clean nothing to address anything else that was in the um, report as i walked into the room the scent is so overwhelming it's hard to think about working in here but this is the training room for elections workers for the upcoming election and elections officials say if the problem isn't fixed there'll be no training in this room the cabinets where the moldy books were were also cleaned and doors removed. An email thread from board members showed that some felt it was a matter for the supervisor to handle. Brian said he can't force anyone to a meeting. His concern is for health and safety. Constant Craig and Tony that were there in the election when she was a victim of moral exposure. So knowing that and see what can happen, I as a responsible person must call the board together to see how the board can work with the supervisor of election and the landlord and property and procurement to correct the situation. Erica Parsons, News 2. Elections officials have not received a report from the company about their remediation efforts. News 2 did contact Sunny Al's management for comment on how and when they plan to address the mold issue, but calls were not returned by news time. Well, as News 2 reported yesterday, the Alexander Henderson Elementary School's kitchen is shut down until further notice from a rodent infestation to non-working equipment in the school's kitchen. Now, this is an issue that has been on, ongoing for a number of years. The Board of Education, along with the Department of Health and Maintenance, are doing their best to put an end to this situation. Arrangements to have the school's meals prepared at Claudio Marco Elementary and transported in bulk to Henderson have been finalized. Well, after learning that the U.S. territories will be eligible to receive two increases in the federal dollars provided, the officials of the Virgin Islands Department of Human Services are considering the next steps so that the medical assistance program can be expanded to include low-income adults who are not pregnant and who do not have children. News News' Shanika Robinson has that story. A few weeks ago, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, announced that the U.S. territories will be eligible to receive two increases in the federal dollars provided, thereby decreasing the share that they must contribute to utilize the fund. According to a recent statement, officials are now considering the next steps so that the Medicaid Assistant Program can be expanded to include low-income adults who are not pregnant and who do not have children. It's not a group that's been traditionally served, and like I said, the Medicaid system statewide has never um, served them before. Once the federal government made that allowable, uh, it was just sort of a matter of when. The federal government confirmed that they would be picking up a higher percentage of the tab for that population once the Medicaid program is expanded to include the specific group. The federal government is now offering that they will pick up 78 percent of the cost of that group, and uh, unlike the 2% increase for everybody, which is only good for two years, this 78% match for this new group, if we add them, actually goes all the way out to um, 2019. Um, so it's for a much uh, longer period of time. A report that would show that the territory can be considered a Medicaid expansion state will be due in mid-February and meeting that criteria will be necessary for both increases. We've recently discovered that there are a couple of thousand people who are probably already eligible for Medicaid in the territory but don't know it, have never applied. 
that we have a sense of who they are now, and we're going to be reaching out to those people to tell them, you know, if you come in right now, we can make you eligible. According to Commissioner Finch, the department will continue to work on their current agenda while bringing the other group on board. We're going to go ahead with those expansions. We're not changing our plans, but we're then going to see how quickly we can move in uh, this now additional group of the non-pregnant childless adults and bring them on board to take advantage of the increased federal participation. Shaniqua Robinson, News 2. For more information on Medicaid or to inquire about eligibility, contact the Department of Human Services on St. Croix at 773-2323. On St. Thomas, that number is 774-0930. And on St. John, it's 776-6334. A 19-year-old is dead and a 26-year-old is injured, police say, after a shooting in Williams Delight that occurred the same night. As police continue to investigate, they are urging anyone who knows anything about this fatal shooting to call detectives and tell them what you know. The numbers to call are 712-6077, 712-6037-911, or you can call Crime Stoppers USVI at 1-800-222-TIPS. Here's more. Police arrived on the scene. They saw the victim lying in the street with several persons around him. Police also contacted the second victim at his home, which is located nearby. The victims were taken to the Governor Juan F. Louis Hospital by ambulance, where Antonio Ilaraza was pronounced dead. Police are urging anyone who knows anything about this fatal shooting to call detectives and tell them what you know. Meanwhile, police in St. Croix are also investigating an apparent drowning that occurred at a residence in Estate Sierra Verde in Cotton Valley. The 85-year-old male victim was found by his wife unresponsive in the family pool. Police were notified of the incident about 5 p.m. on January 21st. The victim's wife said after lunch, she left her husband relaxing by the pool and went out. She returned about 4.30 and found him face down in the pool. Emergency medical technicians and the fire department, as well as the VIPD, were all on the scene. The victim was pronounced dead by medical personnel. Debris, overgrown vegetation, and abandoned properties promote illegal activity in some areas. According to the VIPD, spaces promote community pride, lessens negativity, influences, and incidences of crime. With this in mind, St. Thomas Chief of Police Darren Foy is collaborating with the Department of Public Works, the St. Thomas Animal Shelter, and the VIPD Special Operations Unit to conduct a community cleanup in Ras Valley near the Gomez Elementary School. And that cleanup began today, Wednesday. It has been an ongoing project between the Housing Authority and the Virgin Islands Police Department to try to eradicate some of the negativity around the community. And some of those issues that have been plaguing the community and the Joseph Gomez schools are these chicken coops, which are guarded by pit bulls, that has been a nuisance to the individuals that live here and also the children that attend the Joseph Gomez schools. This morning we came with public works to try to get rid of the chicken coops and the dogs that are housed in these particular areas and stop this nuisance to the public of the housing community. The housing community reached out to the police department to try to make sure that when they're doing the cleanup that it's safe and they're protected. And that's why the Virgin Islands Police Department, members of the SOB unit and Sergeant Bellot of the... Well, meanwhile, turning our attention to the icy coal areas, people from Maine to North Carolina are dealing with snow, icy roads, and frigid temperatures after another big winter storm. The storm is blamed for at least one death and dozens of traffic accidents. Coem has the latest from New York. Bone-chilling temperatures are making it tough on people trying to dig out from another winter storm in the Northeast. Forecasters say the Arctic blast will stick around for a few days. Our old friend the polar vortex is back with bitter winds, temperatures 15 to 25 degrees below average. There's more than a foot of snow on the ground in parts of New York, Massachusetts and Connecticut. Philadelphia was also buried and the nation's capital hasn't gotten this much snow in three years. Here on Broadway, the morning wind chill temperature has been below zero. This is where thousands of Super Bowl fans will be taking in the sights of New York in less than two weeks. Gosh, I hope it warms up. Yeah, it'd be better for everybody. 
The cold and snow turned this Amtrak train into the Polar Express. Somehow, the nasty weather seeped inside the train as it traveled between Baltimore and Washington. At the airports, it will be another long day for travelers in the Northeast. Hundreds of flights are canceled, and that's in addition to about 3,000 nationwide that didn't get off the ground yesterday. Co M for CBS News, New York. And keeping our eye on the economy, Target says it's laying off 475 workers worldwide as it struggles with disappointing sales and aftershocks from a massive security breach at the retailer. Target also said it will no longer offer part-time employees health care coverage because new options are now available through health care exchanges under the Affordable Care Act. This is a New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow down 41, Nasdaq and S&P up, Nasdaq 17, S&P 1. Coming up on News 2, get ready for the entertainment event of the year on St. John with Love City Live. A whole weekend of beach, music, boating, and much, much more. It kicks off from this evening. We'll have that schedule coming up. <music> Director of the Virgin Islands Bureau of Internal Revenue, Claudette Watson Anderson, reminds all Virgin Islands employers that they are required to submit Form W-VI-2VI for employment in 2013 to every employee by January 31, 2014. Failure to provide an employee with Form W-2VI by January 31st is subject to a civil penalty of $50. In certain cases, criminal penalties may also apply. Questions regarding Forms W-2VI should be directed to the Office of Chief Counsel at 714-9312 or 7151040, extension 2249. Well, work has commenced on the Frenchman's Bay overhead distribution system with the Virgin Islands Water and Power Authority and Bryan Electrical Contracting Corp. Crews will install high voltage cable pad mount transformers and pad mount switches weekdays from 7.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now on Thursday, January 23rd, from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., one lane will be closed to vehicular traffic to allow crews to pull cables in the area of Port of Sale Mall and Hooters. Traffic will flow in both directions using one lane. On Sunday, January 26, crews will work from 3 a.m. to 10 a.m. installing high-voltage cables between the Port of Sale Mall and Havenside Mall's main entrance. We'll get ready for the entertainment event of the year on St. John with Love City Live. It's a whole weekend of beach, music, boating, and more. Tropical rhythms and the soothing sounds of international reggae legend Barris Hammond will command the airwaves from January 22nd to the 26th. Now, Love City Live enters its fourth year with an incredible lineup of renowned reggae artists. Events have kicked off from this evening with Reggae Roadblock Happy Hour at Motu Bar, and that's going on until 8 p.m. And then on Thursday, January 23rd, Hush, the exclusive, all-inclusive, Villa Soiree, that's from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. On Friday, January 24th, Rockers All-White Beach Party at Cruise Bay St. John Beachfront. Then on Saturday, the highlighted event, Barris Hammond live in concert at the Winston Wells Ballpark in Cruise Bay. Also performing, D-Harmony, Unity Band, Fire Train Band, Final Phase, and The Echo People. Gates open at 4.30 p.m. Live performances begin at 5.30 p.m. Now the festival-like atmosphere will include arts and crafts, vendors, and Caribbean food, fresh coconut, and premium bars. Now on Sunday, January 26, the ultimate powerboat party. It's the wind-down beach party of the Love City Live weekend. All boats sail to Sandy Spit, then White Bay, Joseph Van Dyke, British Virgin Islands. And we are proud to be a sponsor this year once again. AT&T has activated two new 4G mobile internet cell sites in St. Croix that will enhance coverage and capacity for area residents and businesses and provide speeds up to four times faster than 3G. The areas benefiting from the two new sites include Mount Welcome Road and Route 85 North and East Christiansted and East End Road and the nearby, nearby golf course Route 60 and the surrounding area. The two new St. Croix cell sites are part of AT&T's Project Velocity, a three-year investment plan announced last fall to expand and enhance its IP broadband networks. Well, be sure to stick around. Your News 2 AccuWeather forecast is coming up next. <music> 